these pellets of about this size is about as small as you can make them where they're still going to have oxygen free centers and oxygen rich and also surface area rich because of the texture under a microscope uh, surfaces. So you have your anaerobic and your aerobic bacteria growing on these little pellets, which is pretty amazing because otherwise you need a deep substrate. If you're using just garden soil, you're going to need a deeper substrate to get that layer of oxygen free material. You don't actually need it. And that's a big secret that a lot of people who are into deep substrate tanks kind of neglect to think about. All right, welcome my friends. So today we are going to be covering one part of a subject of putting new substrate into an aquarium. And that is whether you want active substrate with nitrates, nitrates, ammonia in it, or whether you want to have something that simply buffers your aquarium water that is a aqua soil, or whether you want something completely inert like sand or gravel, which generally don't have any impact unless they have KH or GH properties like uh, aragonite or crushed coral or sand that's made out of coral. Otherwise, they have no impact on the chemistry of your water. So you have a choice to make, and this video hopefully will go over the difference between those aqua soils and why you may want one versus the other uh, and the difference, because it means life and death in our aquariums for our shrimp, our fish, and ultimately our plants as well. So, let's jump in, let's talk about it while I'm prepping some soil for a little aquarium. And if you want to catch the other video on keeping your water clear while you're doing this, while you're doing aquascaping and so forth, uh, there will be links pinned down in the comments to those videos. I wanted to keep this a bit shorter and make it a series rather than one really long video. So let's jump right in right now. Now there's lots of different aquascaping soils on the market, whether you're using dirt from the garden, which I hate to tell you, it's going to be silty and dirty no matter how much you rinse it. Or you can buy these aqua soils, like this is Rio uh, Escurio E, which is really just a Brightwell Aquatics product. It's little pellets made out of clay and uh, all sorts of nutrients that are from various clay, silt, and soil substrates. Now, in a lot of these substrates, there are two different categories, and that is like this Amazonia by ADA, uh, or Aqua Design Amano, which is expensive stuff, but this is the top of the line uh, stuff, and this is what we call a active uh, substrate. And that means that it has all of the nitrates, nitrites and ammonia that your plants will need to start out in it. So it's also going to leach into your water and it needs to be one, rinsed of debris thoroughly so that there's not excess amounts of that. And two, it needs to be cycled for anywhere between six to eight weeks. So it's gonna take longer, you're gonna need to have more patience, but this is where you get those incredible aquascapes like these that you've seen pictures of where the plants just look out of this world, they're using CO2 and high lights. Now, if you want to just get life into your aquarium and have something like shrimp, this actually will buffer your aquarium right to the, the uh, limit you need to be at if you're starting with fairly neutral water. So if, assuming you went and got either RO water or your local water is pretty uh, neutral around 7.0 pH and doesn't have a lot of hardness, this will kind of put the water into a slightly acidic state with just the right amount of calcium and carbonate for your shrimp usually. You need to adjust it based on species sometimes, but for the most part, Brightwell soils are great for that. And also there are other brands out there. One of the most common you'll see is gonna be Fluval. There's Fluval Stratum, there's Fluval Planet Plus, there's uh, all sorts of different things out there that are ready for this. So when it comes time to wash your substrate, this is where you're going to save yourself the headache altogether. And as long as you realize, okay, I have the right substrate. Now, don't listen to the fact if it says it has bacteria or not, 
that won't determine whether it has ammonia or not in the substrate. So you're going to need to look and see if there's nitrates, nitrites, and ammonia of some sort, or ammonium, or whatever it may be that they're claiming is in that soil. And there's a lot of different kinds out there. So do your research. Because, as I said, that will kill a lot of fish and plants, and you're going to need to do constant water changes with that tank while it's cycling, but it will establish with much more beneficial bacteria over time because it has much more ammonia to eat. Now, if you want to use that same soil, I will do that sometimes. I will use half of the ADA Amazonia and half of the Fluval Stratum and I will wash them, mix them together, and then I will cap them. And capping them, I have whole videos on that, but it's putting sand or silt or a layer of some sort of thicker, denser substrate. And through Brownian motion, the way things settle, where fish waste and mulm and poo and all that settles down into, usually I'll have lower layers of gravel or maybe another sand bed that's a couple inches deep. And then I'll have a layer of soil and then we'll cap it off. And that void area down in the rocks is where the sand cap will actually act as sort of a filter over time for the very finest particles, which you would expect to float around maybe, but they don't. They actually sink due to density and the surface area they have. Over time, they will get shifted by currents and fish and you moving around things in the tank, doing water changes, whatever it may be, uh, or just settling over time if it's long enough and they will become your active substrate. So even if you start with pure gravel, you may have active substrate if your tank is already established. And that's why you don't go digging up your substrate right off the bat. You don't want to release that ammonia and nitrogen that's so great for your plants, but it will kill your fish and shrimp if they get a large dose of it. So pour your... Uh, your, your uh, choice <laughs> substrate into a container. Now you can either use something like a colander, or spaghetti strainer, whatever you want to call it, and you can take tank water, RO water, or uh, an RO is just essentially distilled water with nothing in it, no chlorine, anything like that. And you want to either uh, submerge it and rinse it like this, or you can use aquarium water. So you can get your gravel vac and you can suck out a bunch of aquarium water from a larger aquarium, put that in a bucket and work it so that you're working with that. Now I like to use two buckets and I don't do this over the sink because if you put it in the sink, a lot of times it's gonna clog up your sink because these little pellets that they actually designed uh, all the way back in the 80s and 90s, a lot of research was done on hydroponic growing of plants and growing of aquatic plants and it was found that these pellets of about this size is about as small as you can make them where they're still going to have oxygen free centers and oxygen rich and also surface area rich because of the texture under a microscope uh, surfaces. So you have your anaerobic and your aerobic bacteria growing on these little pellets, which is pretty amazing because otherwise you need a deep substrate. If you're using just garden soil, you're going to need a deeper substrate to get that layer of oxygen free material. You don't actually need it. And that's a big secret that a lot of people who are into deep substrate tanks kind of neglect to think about is that as long as these little pellets are intact, which is three to five years generally, and then they'll turn to dust, uh, depending on how much you work with your tank, these are also going to be a possible source for anoxic, anaerobic uh, bacteria to thrive, and archaea as well. So you rinse it off. You can either use a bowl or a colander. Now I like colanders to start with because you get the debris out, and use one that's just a bit bigger so none of the little pe pellets are coming out. But then I'll pour more aquarium water over it like this until I feel that I've done it long enough and I'll work it, you know, like you're shampooing someone at a salon or something. But it's also good to float the entire thing and use not just a colander but a bowl at one stage at least because this same aqua soil here, a lot of times it's being sorted from uh, clay that's pelletized and compacted, but that same clay uh, turns the water very dirty. Look at this. Just from a little bit of sloshing and washing, that tank water is already very dirty. But 
Now we've also, with that being aquarium water, we have this ready to go. It has beneficial bacteria, a little bit at least, from your water column, and it doesn't have any sort of uh, ammo ammonia right now or anything like that, being that we use the fluval, and it doesn't have any sort of chlorine in it. So it's totally safe to put in an aquarium and use right away. So let's jump to the step where we're putting it in the aquarium. And I'll show you how you could avoid it being foggy ever in the first place if you rinsed it thoroughly. All right guys, so we're gonna put the aqua soil in the aquarium. And even if we didn't rinse it extremely thoroughly, there's no water in the tank yet. So we're literally just shaking it in there for now. Getting enough in there that we can get a good coating of it however you want it. Now I like to put it at least an inch deep no matter what, even if it's just for shrimp for buffering the water. But if you're growing plants, you really want an inch or two minimum so that those roots can spread out. And also, if you cap that afterwards, your plants will stay because of the sand cap. That will hold on to them firmer. Whereas this stuff, it, they tend to float up and away, especially if there's any current or flow. But now we've got the aqua soil in here. This whole thing is dry right now, but we kept this aqua soil damp. We went straight from the dirty bucket to there. Now you can pour this out, and if this was the type of aqua soil like Amazonia that has ammonia and nitrogen and all the nutrients in it plus the minerals, you can pour that in your garden, and that is absolutely wonderful for your gardens. However, keep it away from your fish because it's poison. All right, my friends, thank you for coming along for this journey. That is where this video ends today, though, however. And if you wanted to see more on active versus inactive soil, how to wash and prep and make sure that your aquarium is not muddy when you are putting new substrate in or adding substrate, there is a standalone video that's 12 minutes long or so about that as well. I wanted to keep these a bit shorter and make them a bit of a series. So... Uh, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope that you uh, understand the difference between active and inactive uh, nitrate-rich versus uh, non-active nitrate soil, and the pros and cons to each. All right, I'll talk to you guys next time, and thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. See you next time. Bye.